young crowds, enthusiastic crowds, people stopped us at UC Davis yesterday, excited that you were being here. Why do you resonate so well with young people? I think they realize what they're get, inheriting, what they're getting from the older generation, debt, big government, invasion of their privacy, wars that never end, a Federal Reserve that seems to take care of special interest groups, and I, I, they're not confident and they don't trust the government. They, they don't think they're hearing the truth. And when you see, again, a sea of young faces that are enthusiastic, does this, does this mean that there's kind of regeneration in the Republican Party, or are they likely to leave the party later on? I think it's up for grabs. I think the Republican Party sent a signal out that there's an open door and we want to build the party. And yet, many times when some of our supporters go to conventions, they get closed out. They don't want them there. And they'll even change the rules to exclude them. So it's a fight going on, a determination of our supporters and the believers in limited government versus the old top liners that, that don't like to give up their prerogatives and, and their control of the party. But uh, there's a large number of people that are unidentified independents and, uh, uh, you know, the young people. And, uh, of course, we, we're working within the Republican Party, but uh, we want to change some of the beliefs. But we actually believe in cutting spending, you know. Uh, we, believe, we believe we should do some of the things that we've talked about for decades, shrinking the size of government and not running up these deficits. So that's the big difference. Okay. I have to ask you the obvious question, that is, as the campaign continues, what's your strategy for continuing at this point with Romney? What, about roughly 300 away from getting enough right. votes for nomination? Well, to continue to do what we're doing because we have two strategies. One, to seek a goal, which, uh, you know, has been and will continue to be to get the most number of delegates and see how things come out. But also to change things, change people's minds and change people's attitudes and appear, uh, appeal to the hearts and minds of people so that they really believe in something. We want to change the status quo. We want to change the foreign policy. We want to change the monetary policy. We want to balance budget and we want personal liberties protected so that's where we really believe we're winning not only are we going to have a lot more delegates than the people realize but we're also in positions now where we're winning chairmanships of the state parties and county parties and a lot of people are getting elected to lower offices too and how do you determine or how do you, what do you call your your message and your movement i know some call it tea party some call it conservative what do you call it I call it a freedom movement, although uh, it was during our campaign about four years ago that the Tea Party movement sort of broke loose. Uh, it doesn't, it's, it's amorphous, it's too, uh, too spread out, and uh, so it doesn't, uh, although we work very closely with the Tea Party people, we actually identify and work with some of the complaints that the Occupy people complain about too, special interests, the bailouts. So uh, I call it a freedom movement, that's what we refer to in the movement itself is too many a revolutionary thing, an intellectual revolution on the ideas of what the role of government ought to be. Okay, last question, I'll make it real quick. Uh, will you be a candidate all the way until the convention? Oh, well, that, that remains to be seen. It depends on how things work out. I mean, I think that the delegates that have been working their way through, and there's still a lot to be counted, and this is where we're surprising a lot of people. Sure, we're going to work all the way through and keep the delegates and have a presence at the convention. That seems to be what politics